Meghan Markle and Prince Harry might have angered the wrong person. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex discussed the impact internet trolls had on their mental health in an episode of their docuseries, Meghan and Harry. While dissecting the criticism they received, the pair included a clip of Shallon Lester without her permission, and the former entertainment writer was baffled by the discovery. Lester uploaded a video to her YouTube channel discussing the recent cancellation of archetypes. In her clip, Lester was admittedly outraged that she was used in the Netflix show. Believe me when I say I'm pursuing every opportunity to nail there. To the wall for this, Lester confessed. It's defamation, it's slander, it's mischaracterization. And you know what else it is? Misinformation. During her recording, Lester threw a few jabs at the Sooth star for her failed Spotify partnership. The Duchess or reality TV show game show briefcase girl, whatever the she thinks she's supposed to be, has had her deal with Spotify, the $20 million 12-episode podcast deal, cut, the influencer said. And it seems that now Spotify has cut ties with her, everybody is coming out of the woodwork to denounce this couple's terrible work ethic, their, entitled, bizarre, self-aggrandizing attitude, and general unlikability, she added. She later mentioned United Talent CEO Jeremy Zimmer, who recently insulted the Duchess' attempt at podcasting. Even the UTA, the United Talent Agency, a huge talent agency in Hollywood, the head of that saying, I don't think they're that talented, the former deputy editor said. The word talent is literally in the title of the company he runs and he's like, no, they don't have it. After referencing the Sussexes' recent professional challenges, Lester returned to her legal battle against them. It is defamatory, slanderous and I am discussing legal action with my team against Meghan and Harry and bought Sentinel CEO Christopher Buzzi for his unfounded statements presented as facts," she passionately exclaimed. I challenge anyone associated with this documentary to prove these claims of a shadow network," she continued. The very fact that they assume there's some sort of global conspiracy against them is exactly why everyone despises them so much. She later called the former actress paranoid and self-aggrandizing, and she can't fathom the idea that they're boring, entitled victim narratives make them grating, cringy. Simple as that.